I love the word grace. You should too. If you don't know what it means, you should get to know what it means. It must have been one of Paul's favorite words too. As he writes this intimate letter from himself to the church in the city of Philippi, he wrote Philippians 1 verse 2. He said, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul loved the word grace. He loved that concept so much that he began most of his letters using the word or the concept grace. In the original Greek language, the word grace is the word karyas. It means a gift or a blessing given to us by Jesus Christ. It means to show kindness. Imagine why Paul then uses this word to simply say hello. I think he does so because he knows that the only reason any of us are in the Christian family to begin with is because of grace. None of us deserve to be in God's family. As shown, we think we're as so often we think that we are better than others, and as soon as we think that, we're sadly mistaken. I'm going to go to heaven, and I'm in God's family for only one reason, grace. God has given me the gift of kindness and forgiveness. On the cross, he expressed the greatest act of kindness the world has ever known. He gave grace and mercy. Mercy is the unmerited favor of God. Let me remind you today that your standing with God is based solely on grace. And we're to live in the freshness of grace. I think another reason he begins his letter with the word grace is because he knows that's how people within the Philippian church are to relate to each other. So many people in our world today are so harsh with each other. We tend to be demanding and to think and to believe the worst we hear about other people. We're quick to run to judgment. We're quick to condemn when we hear. Paul said we're to live with grace toward each other. And he wished for them at the very beginning of this letter, grace. Peter tells us in one of the letters he wrote that one of the things we're to add to our spiritual development is brotherly kindness. In 2 Peter 1 and 7, he says, supplement your faith with a generous provision of brotherly kindness. In the book of Colossians, Paul says we're to clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That's Colossians 3.12. Think about it. Think about how our marriages, our families, our businesses, and even our churches would all be changed if we really practice grace toward each other. Instead of believing the worst we hear, we refuse to believe the worst until we've had it confirmed and until we've confronted one-on-one, -on -one, as the scripture says. Even if we find fault, we're to be less than harsh and more than gentle. Imagine what would happen in our families with brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and cousins and co-workers and nature, neighbors. If we reacted with kindness more than we did with harshness, as believers, we're to be gentle and loving. So as Paul writes his church that he so dearly loves, he reminds them that the Christian faith is one that is built upon love, grace, and understanding, not harshness and a demanding spirit. Here's a great thought for today. When grace is received, it is to be given as well. Here's a great prayer to pray. Father, help me to forgive other people as you have forgiven me. Help me to be as gentle and patient with other people's faults as I want you to be with mine. God bless you.